Hi, and thank you for joining us here at PLCGurus.net's YouTube channel. If you like this and similar type videos, please do click the subscribe button. Also, if you do find this video useful, please click the like button below. And just a quick uh, plug for our blog site, you can visit us at www.plcgurus.net. I'll include a link here to the blog site where you'll find a community of, of people or members just like you who are, well, number one, have a passion for industrial automation and control systems and who want to share some of their experiences, problems, and solutions. Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to walk you through the process of creating a new RS Logics 5000 project. And the same workflow would happen for Studio 5000 as well. Um, we're going to look at how to create that project, save it, and then download it to a Control Logics controller, which I have set up on an Ethernet network uh, at 192.168.1.10. Okay, so let's get going. So I'm going to go up here and launch the RS Logics 5000 uh, software program. Of course, you'll need a license to run this pro program from Rockwell Automation. So assuming you have it, we'll start it up. Okay, so the first thing you want to do here is you want to go to the new project uh, icon in the menu bar here. Also, you could do the file new as well. Okay, so here you're, you're presented with this dialog screen. So if you hit this drop-down list, you're going to see all the different CPU types supported um, by this version of the software. Okay, so I happen to be using the L61 controller here in the lab, so I'm going to go ahead and just leave it at the default. And in the revision, you'll want to select what revision or firmware version that your processor currently has. So you can see here I only have one option for version 20 because I'm only, I only have the version 20 instance of the software currently running on this machine. So if I had multiple versions of the software running, for instance, version 19, 20, um, Studio 5000, when you get into 21 through 30, um, I would have many more options here. Okay, so I'm currently running version 20 of the software, and I'm currently running version 20 of the firmware in the controller. So I'll just leave it there. Next thing, you'll want to give it a name. We're not going to worry about redundancy. So we're going to give it a name. So I'll call it my test project. And you can give it a description if you want. Next thing you're going to want to do is specify the size of the chassis that you have. So again, you have some options here. I happen to be using a seven slot chassis. So I will select the A7 uh, chassis type here. Um, the slot. So this is where you want to tell the software or your, your project where the CPU physically resides in this chassis. So by convention and a best practice is um, slot zero. Now with the Control Logics platform of controllers, you don't have to put the CPU in slot zero. But by convention, most often you will see it there. Okay. So let's just click OK here. And we're out of here. Okay, so you can see I have on the left-hand side here the controller organizer window, or the cow for short. I have the basically the blank slate that's created for you. So at this point, you would go ahead and configure your I/O modules depending on what I/O configurations you have, and you could go ahead and start coding in your ladder logic. Okay, so just for the purpose of being able to download to the controller, I'm going to go ahead and just add a couple of instructions onto the Logics Designer here. And I'm going to go ahead and give them a tag name. So I think I'll cover tags in another video. But for the point of this video, I'm just going to say my Boolean tag 1. And you can see here, if you create the tag inside the Logics Designer inside an instruction, it will automatically specify the correct data type for you. So it knows how I'm using this tag, and it tells me, okay, it's, it has to be tough type Boolean. So again, um, we'll get into data types, we'll get into tagging in another video. So I'm going to click Create. And then on the output instruction here, the OTE, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. So I'm just going to highlight the question mark here, like I did on the previous instruction. Right-click and go New Tag. 
And I'm going to call this my output enable. So you can just call them whatever you want. Okay. So there we go. We have enough for to download into our controller now. So I'm going to go ahead and click save. And now I want to download to my endpoint, my target controller. So if I go up here and to the Who Active screen, remember, if you haven't seen my video on RS Links configurations, I will include a link here. Um, but as we discussed, the Who Active is like an, a window into your RS Logic, or sorry, RS Links configurations. So you can see here, I get to, to peruse or browse all of the different drivers which I previously set up in Links. So I'm using the Ethernet driver, so I'll just choose this Ethernet to one, which is an Ethernet devices driver. And you can see here, my Ethernet bridge module is, is currently configured at the 1.10 uh, address, like I, like I had said previously. Okay, so I'm going to drill down, get to my backplane, and then now I can see everything that currently resides in this, in this chassis. So I want to download to the CPU, so that means I need to select the CPU, and then I will click Download. And if all goes well, I'll get a warning. Here it is. If you're downloading to a running machine, uh, to make sure that the machine is in a safe state in which to do so. Okay, so we're going to say okay. Go ahead and download. And we're compiling our routines now. We're downloading into the controller. And it's asking me, do you want to put it back into remote run mode? I'm going to choose yes. And there we have it. So I've successfully created a new project, added a little bit of ladder logic to it, and downloaded it via my RS Lynx Ethernet driver into my controller. I hope you found this video informative. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.